can AMD with Zen 3 for now really be considered the leading force in the CPU market? Yes, as clickbaity this question may sound, right now in early 2021 this question very much makes sense. You'll soon see what I mean by that. You'll see what today's CPU is actually capable of. This my friends is the AMD CPU that goes by the name of Ryzen 9 5900X, featuring 12 cores, 24 threads along with pretty respectable high clock speeds. Not long ago I've taken a look at the 16 core flagship model 5950X and it did amaze me, albeit the price of it being rather steep, which partially also is due to the current market situation and all that's going on. Things appear to be similarly as bad in terms of pricing with today's 5900X. Yes, my dear friends, at the time of making this video, we are easily talking of 730 US dollars for this 12 core. Unfortunately, it is not uncommon if you have to pay even more for it. So US pricing seems to be equally as bad as it is over here in Europe. We are light years away from realistic prices and I would strongly advise against paying too much. According to AMD, the MSRP should be $549 for the 5900X. However, we simply cannot blame the current situation in the industry for everything. AMD is somewhat part of it too. Just like with the 5950X and 5800X, today's 5900X has gotten more expensive compared to the previous gen 3000 series. We are talking of $50 more expensive. So that's a fair bit. The 3900X's MSRP was at $499, whereas for the 5900X you officially have to shell out $549. Oh well, enough complaining about the price, let's hope things improve over the next few months. In today's video, the Ryzen 9 5900X will not only show what it's capable of achieving, but also how well it stacks up against the flagship model 5950X as well as Intel's current flagship. Let's get into it. A huge thank you goes out to the Spartan warrior named Georgios over at the hardware shop Equipper. He got me the whole Ryzen 5000 series at launch more or less. For your information, it is me who's to blame for bringing you these reviews so belated. I wanted to invest a lot of time to finally make the switch to a newer, better CPU and GPU testing platform. That system will give us better results, thus better answers and I think it was totally worth the sheer amount of work. As was the case with the 16 core, the 5900X also does come with the usual accessories, practically none. No sign of any cooling solution anymore, which does make sense however. Now as I've already said in my 5950X review, there are some fundamental changes to Zen 3 over Zen 2, ones that have a significant impact on performance, especially when it comes to gaming. Short and sweet, AMD now has parted ways with their 4 core CCX layouts. A 16 core SKU therefore now only consists of two 8 core dies and those share a large 32 megabyte level 3 cache pool respectively. But how do we actually achieve 12 cores if there are only 8 core dies in use? In theory we therefore could either go with only 8 cores or the full 16 core layout. Simple, for the 5900X AMD indeed does make use of two 8 core dies. Two cores simply have been disabled per CCD per 8 core die respectively. So those two dies still have super fast access to the 32 megabytes of L3 cache respectively. In total there's 64 megabytes to work with, just as with the 5950X flagship. So very very good performance should certainly be expected. Furthermore, AMD promises a whopping 19% IPC performance uplift over Zen 2. Alright, all was tested with my new testing platform consisting of the truly awesome ASRock X570PG Velocita or Velocita motherboard, my current favorite among X570 boards. As for cooling, I'm using the trusty Deepcool Castle 240EX AIO liquid cooler and for the graphics card, to minimize GPU bottlenecks, I've gone with the mighty yet super expensive Nvidia RTX 3090, the one by ASUS, the tough gaming edition. Let's talk clock speeds. When stressing all 12 cores, we are looking at a clock speed of slightly over 4400 MHz. We do however quickly drop below the mark once we let the test run for an extended amount of time and at the end of the day end up at 4340 MHz worst case scenario. Things get really interesting though in this single core test. 
AMD states a maximum of 4.8 GHz, but other than we are usually used to, my particular CPU was capable of exceeding that max boost clock. In fact, I managed a max boost of 4941 MHz, which in my case doesn't even seem to be too uncommon with this CPU. But it sure needs to be said that the achieved clock speeds do depend on a variety of different factors, such as actual CPU, platform, BIOS version, as well as cooling. In-game in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, my 5900X on average gets to a max of 4700 or 4800 MHz. But I don't want to drag this video out any longer, let's get to the juicy bits, the benchmarks. Enjoy! Alright, what can I say? From a technical point of view, AMD delivers big time with this one. Without any doubt, with Zen 3, there are massive performance gains to be witnessed, going almost as far that in productivity applications, the 5900X 12 core gets dangerously close to the 3950X 16 core. To be fair, not in every instance out there, but there certainly are a few programs where this applies sometimes even with the 5900X coming out on top, which is really impressive since it comes with four less cores. Now if we are already taking the 3950X into comparison, it's logical the direct predecessor 3900X gets left behind in the dust by the speedy 5900X. The sheer amount of performance gains is immense and not something we usually get to see coming from one generation to another. I'd like to point out though that all tests were carried out with PBO Precision Boost Overdrive disabled. So if you'd like to get even more out of your CPU with the help of AMD's overclocking feature, the doors are open for you as long as power delivery and cooling is adequate. What can I say about the gaming performance? 
while Intel's 10th gen CPUs are getting cornered. If you're asking me, AMD now have finally caught up with Intel in terms of gaming performance. One now can more or less state that Intel and AMD for now are trading blows in games. Depending on the title, it's either AMD or Intel that's on top. When inspecting those FPS averages of the games I've tested with, we get a clear picture. If we are being exact and count every single frame per second, the 5900X does manage to slightly beat the flagship model 5950X. Due to the higher clock speeds along with a very respectable amount of 12 cores, in the case of the 5900X, it makes sense. So if you want to get yourselves a 5950X just for gaming, I would strongly advise against doing so, well except if you also are in need of a lot of raw performance that is, which 16 cores certainly do bring to the table, no doubt about it. But no matter how well AMD currently does in games, with Zen 3 we probably should not completely ignore what Team Blue Intel is currently working on, especially not if you're mainly a gamer. Because if recent rumors can be trusted and turn out to be true, we could be getting even better gaming performance with Intel's upcoming new chips. But it's still too early to come up with all sorts of theories, and when it's time, there also will be talk about temperatures and power draw I suspect. It is not a surprise the temperatures on the 5900X are pretty good when cooled by a 240mm all-in-one liquid cooler. The power consumption on the other hand might surprise some of you watching. Exactly as it was the case with the 3900X and 3950X, the 12-core 5900X does happen to consume a couple of watts more than the 16-core 5950X of the same lineup. One reason for it being, out of the box the 12 core models simply operate at a higher core voltage. While with the 5950X we are only dealing with 1.038 to 1.044 volts, the 5900X at the same load operates at 1.175 to 1.181 volts. My summary, the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X with its 12 high clocking efficient cores not only is a great choice for demanding rendering activities, but for gaming as well. But nonetheless, I still want to inform you that the gamers among you might not even need 12 cores. A Ryzen 5800X or even 5600X could at the very end of the day end up being the much better choice from a price to performance perspective. Those of you, however, that don't want to spend as much money on a CPU such as the 5950X for the offered raw performance have no reason to feel bad about going with the Ryzen 9 5900X. It's an extremely powerful CPU that now is able to keep up with the likes of the previous gen mainstream flagship such as the 3950X when it comes to performance in multi-threaded applications. In terms of pricing, it's not easy to exactly tell where we are right now, which is why it's hard stating that this processor comes with a good price to performance ratio. From a technical point of view, the 5900X pretty much is a flawless CPU, no doubt. With that said, thank you for your continued support and for watching. Stay healthy out there.